this short video will show you the accessibility features in the TestNav app. If you'd like to see them yourself or you want to have your students practice, simply go to your Applications folder. And if you scroll down in alphabetical order, you'll see under T for TestNav. You can double click that. You can even, if you want to, have your students right click the TestNav app and keep it in their doc. So once the TestNav app launches, this is what it looks like. If for some reason it doesn't say Park Training up here, just click in the upper right hand corner and click Choose a Different Customer. This might be the other screen that you might see. If you look all the way down here to the left, this is the Park Training website. The date of the actual test um, in April and May, we will be using this New Jersey button. But for the purpose of the practice on this Thursday, on March 24th, we'll be using the Park Training button. So if I click on the Park Training button, you have access to um, all of the practice tests by clicking on this practice test link. They're organized over here by grades. So if I just, let's say, click on grade eight, you have um, both English language arts and mathematics practice tests. So obviously the accessibility tools are a little bit different in mathematics than English language arts. If you go to mathematics, you can access the ruler, the calculator, and things like that, whereas English language arts has different tools, obviously. Now within these practice tests, you have um, a couple different parts. Some of them only have one part to them. Uh, closed captioning, American Sign Language, and text-to-speech are only going to be available for students with personal needs profiles, um, IEP directed, that say they're going to have those uh, features available to them. So I wouldn't have your general education student, for example, practice with closed captioning or text-to-speech or American Sign Language because they're not going to have access to those tools. Uh, if you're not sure if one of your students will have access to these tools and you want to let them practice, reach out to Kathy Nolesnik or Lisa Bernardo and they'll be able to tell you based on their IEP whether or not they'll have access. So I'm just going to launch the general computer-based practice. Okay, I'm just going to click Start Test Now and Start Section. So I'm going to go through these tools kind of quickly because most of them are repeat. Uh, first of all, up here, you still have the navigation buttons to move from question to question. So as you can see, I'm now on question 3 of 23. You also have the review button if students want to skip between questions. At the bottom, there is a key, all questions, not answered questions, and then bookmarked questions. And of course, they can bookmark a question. So now you can see this stays highlighted on question number 4. And now let's say I go forward a few more questions. If I click on the review button, question number four does stay bookmarked until I go back to it and unbookmark it. Within one of the questions, you've got a couple tools here. Uh, first is the answer eliminator. So if you click on the answer eliminator and you hover over any of the answers, it does let you X out answers. To undo it, you just click it again and it takes the X off of there. Now when you want to go back to using the regular mouse, you just click on the pointer and you have the regular mouse again. To use the highlighter tools, you can just stay on the regular mouse and you can hover over any of the text. This is one of the differences that I noticed so far is that there's only two highlighter colors, blue and, um, and pink this year. There's no yellow. So if I click on the pink, click on the blue, that's how you can get the highlight. So if I click on this again, I can use this first one to get rid of the highlight where it has the um, white with the slash through it. Uh, the next tool up here is the notepad tool. So if the students want to take notes and, and write some things down and do some pre-writing, they can open up the notepad and type in it. And they can always X out of it. And what's really nice is I'm going to go to the next question now. And I can open the notepad and now take notes on question five, X out of that. And when I go back to question number four and launch the notepad, those notes stay with me. So I don't have to worry about finishing this question while I'm on it. So that's a nice feature as well. Um, over under the drop down menu here, uh, these are going to be available for all students. So change the background and foreground color. Um, enable the magnifier. So the magnifier looks like this. Magnifier stays up until you go back to this drop-down menu and unchoose it. 
also show, show line reader mask. Um, this is something uh, you saw yesterday in the video, but you can move this around. Uh, you can also resize how much it masks and you can resize the amount of text it will show you. And then of course this can be moved down. So if you think this would benefit your students, it, it might be better to show them first. Again, this tool as well stays until you go here and uncheck it. And then uh, enable answer masking as well. So these can be shown and unshown. And I can click out of that as well. Um, students will be signing out of TestNav when they go to the bathroom. So you can just show them where this is as well. If you have any other questions about the accessibility features, uh, which ones will be available to you or how to use them, please reach out to me and or Kathleen Lesnick and Lisa Bernardo. I hope this was helpful.